Okay, um, all right. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Um, yeah, all right. La, 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 la. Yeah, right. Um, um, hello, everyone. Um, I don't know if the slideshow is working. Yes, I, I guess it is now. It is. Um, wonderful. So, um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Kazi Mustabin Noor, and um, thanks for so. Um, um, it, thanks for like um, so carefully introducing me. And um, I'm presenting my paper, uh, Spread Zatura for the Immigrant, Othello's Conduct and Civility as a Racialized Other. Um, thanks for being here. And I'll be happy to email my script and my PowerPoint presentation to anyone using a screen reader. Um, so I was mainly working with the research questions um, like, how does the racialized immigrant establish their position in a predominantly white Western society and by what means? So current depictions of racialized characters in literature and media prove that the racialized other has to perform a form of civility to not just blend in, but also to stand out. Shakespeare's Othello is perhaps the first prominent story of an immigrant which upholds this notion. Scholars such as Anya Lumba and Patricia Akimi have spoken in detail regarding Othello's race and gender performance, especially as a black man of Moorish descent. What Othello faces in early modern Venice is similar to what today's racialized subjects also face in the Western world, especially if they want to be regarded as equals among the elite classes. In the early modern period, Baldessar Castiglione's The Book of the Courtier illustrates the necessity of sprezzatura, or an elaborate courtly performance for the ideal European courtier, covering the do's and don'ts of Italian courtliness. My paper argues that the immigrant has to perform a modified sprezzatura or conduct before the white Western gaze. The paper uses key moments from Othello, as well as Lumba's description of the early modern historian Leo Africanus to explain certain techniques employed by the racialized subjects, such as perpetuating existing misconceptions regarding their place of origin, having a certain adaptability and a degree of self-awareness. Using moments from contemporary works, um, the play Disgraced by Ayad Akhtar and popular period drama Downton Abbey, um, which for the shortage of time I won't be able to talk about as much, the paper establishes the relevance of the argument in modern day situations. Despite superior refinement, work ethic and qualifications, the immigrant is never enough in the aforementioned productions, including Othello. Engaging with these works, my paper hopes to demystify the race question and demonstrate the mismatch between expectation and reality in the immigrant man's life. Um, the next section, I did title it, A Good Comprador Agent is Hard to Find, but I'm just simplifying it over here in this title. Um, perpetuating Misconceptions About Place of Origin. Othello was a distinguished guest in Brabantio's prosperous house. The main attraction of his tales lay in their exotic appeal, from personal struggles to stories of wartime glory. Desdemona was wooed by these tales of travels and travails. One may want to read that as innocent curiosity towards a foreign culture or simply tales of interesting travels. However, there is more to the appeal of these stories than simple curiosity. In fact, Othello's tales perpetuate an exoticized backward and barbaric image of the region he comes from. On the one hand, the tales portray pristine natural beauty that is there for the taking at a time when Western powers were running colonial expeditions all over the world. On the other, they contain descriptions of lesser people with stranger practices who are even different in shape or uglier if I must. I would like to speak of a real life Othello whom I encountered in Annie Lumba's Othello and the Racial Question. Described by French writer Jean Bodin as by descent a Moor, born in Spain, in religion Mahometan and afterward a Christian who has traveled all over Africa and Asia Minor, historian um, Al Hassan ibn Muhammad Al Weza Al Fazi, also known as Leo Africanus, was the author of the enormously successful 1526 title History and Description of Africa. The book was a gold mine of all things historic, mythical, true and untrue about the continent of Africa, translated into English just four years before Shakespeare's Othello came into being. The book also reinforced various Orientalist stereotypes about Africa and the Moors, which included jealousy, 
um, quote unquote illicit sexual practices, etc. This won Africanus acclaim in intellectual circles of European historians who drew from his tales to make their argument about the baseness of Africa and Africans stronger. In a similar fashion, Othello banks on these narratives to win the heart and mind of initially Brabantio and then one of the most eligible bachelorettes of Venice, Desdemona. Like Africanus, he takes on the role of the native informant who shows Europe the version of Africa that is the most palatable in high societies. For this, the racialized other needs the gift of storytelling, imagination, some truth, and some calculated lies. Blending in or standing out. I would like to argue that not all aspects of the immigrants um, should ideally be neutralized in their quest to fit into society. Othello's downfall and tragic end was the result of not being able to determine exactly how Venetian he should be in nature. Iago's notions of what an ideal Venetian husband should and should not do position poisons his mind easily due to this reason. In this regard, I would like to talk about a play inspired by Shakespeare's Othello, disgraced by Ayad Akhtar. The Othello of the play is solicitor Amir Kapoor, who lives a glamorous life with his Caucasian wife, Emily, in New York. The reasons behind his downfall are manifold. He changes his surname from the Muslim sounding Abdullah to the more Indian Punjabi sounding Kapoor, hides other sensitive information and at the dinner table with the Iago and Casio equivalents, he reveals more about his ingrained beliefs than he should have. Among many themes of the play, where what stands out to me most is how much an immigrant feels pressurized to hide, to reveal and to conform. The law and the society do not want him to, for example, create a new social security number and change his surname to a less potent one. However, some parts of his Muslim upbringing and cultural dictates have to be hidden away in order to not be labeled as a quote unquote closet jihadist. Despite working twice as hard as his other colleagues, Quote, even if you are one, one of those lapsed Muslims sipping your after dinner scotch alongside your beautiful white American wife, unquote, the immigrant fails to fully integrate. Africanus from the early modern period understood how to market his differences well, and I have a quote over here from Anil Umba's paper. Africanus affirms his adaptability, claiming that he is like a most wily bird called amphibia, who would continually change her element from air to water in order to avoid paying taxes to the king of birds as well as, as, well as the king of fishes. So, um, however, um, just like Amir, um, Othello, uh, also rejects a part of his identity that he thinks as improper. In this situation, Africanus is the more successful of the two due to the fact that he also had championed Muslim scholarship, established Africans as a heterogeneous group where some are better than others, as well as distance himself from the more quote unquote savage cannibals. So um, I'm moving on to the next section, to be or not to be self-aware. Um, the question is exactly how humble should the racial subject be and how self-aware? The answer lies in the portions where Iago poisons Othello's mind with jealousy, a Venetian quality that the tragic hero would best not to have picked up. According to Leo Africanus, the kind of jealousy is a mark of political and cultural sophistication and hence highly developed societies strictly monitored their women's activities. On the other hand, he juxtaposed Africans as quote, brutish kind of people who let their women roam like uncontrolled animals, unquote. When Iago was constantly tormenting Othello with illicit scenarios of his wife being unfaithful. This kind of a belief takes over Othello who realizes the necessity all of a sudden of keeping, of keeping women's behavior in check. Hence, it infuses an element of admiration for the jealous Moor. Othello, well versed in Venetian ways of knowing and being, was not previously the typical jealous Venetian husband. In fact, they did enjoy a degree of an egalitarian relationship before the conspiracy happened. Hence, we can conclude that Othello had known what parts of his nature he had to retain to enjoy a healthy relationship and what parts to reject. Othello's failure to retain this unique characteristic becomes the result of his downfall as he tries to incorporate Venetian control over his wife, succumbing to jealousy due to Iago's psychological manipulation. The result is in many ways complex and it gives rise to many complex feelings in his mind, doubt, jealousy, and insecurity about his achievements as well as his complexion. 
this loss of confidence is significant as Othello for the first time in the play considers himself lesser than the Venetian elite. The already self-aware Othello had let it get to him. For an immigrant, it is good that they know their background struggles and lack of privilege, learn from it and grow. However, the head must be held high in face of external forces that try to shatter one's confidence. Um, I'd like to conclude by saying that in order for the immigrant to have a successful present in Western social circles, they need to be the ideal comprador agent to satiate Western curiosity, understand how and to what extent blend in or stand out in society, and finally, be an appropriate judge of their self-worth. I would like to point out once again that these efforts are not only for the purpose of blending in, but also for the purpose of standing out in, as exceptional in a predominantly white Western society. Othello's struggles, failures, and successes remain relevant to this day for the racialized other as it, as it is a relentless balancing act. The immigrant must know when they can lash out at a racist white woman on public transport. They also need to know how to deal with a quote-unquote Karen politely and effectively while providing customer service. I would like to mention that this notion of immigrant Svetzatura is not a compilation of completely innocent motives. Many of these include sacrificing one's identity in a way that best fits the situation at hand, sometimes at the expense of one's own integrity. Whether we look at the highly successful historian Leo Africanus or the tragic hero Othello, we realize that immigrants or racialized others are only human. The construction of the model minority or model immigrant comes with a price. Shakespeare's Othello pays that price in guilt by murdering his wife. The modern day immigrant relentlessly pays the price in emotional labor, everyday struggles, and at the end of the day, constantly dealing with an identity crisis. Thank you so much indeed. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the Q&A session.